You want to build a gaming PC, which is great, but there's just one problem. You don't know what parts to choose. All this stuff that you need, CPUs and GPUs and motherboard and RAMs, which one's the best one for you? And how do you know that they'll work together? Surely there must be some way to make sense of this stuff. Well, there is. And you know what? You've already found it. I'll tell you how to pick the parts for your gaming PC. And I'm going to do it right after this. Are you tired of that annoying activate Windows message? Quietly judging you and your life choices from the corner of your screen? Why not freaking do something about it and order a genuine Windows 10 key from SCD key? Just go over to the Windows 10 Pro page on SCD key and add it to your cart. And get this. Get this, you guys. You can use my special super secret promo code dweeb to save 25 freaking percent. And then you can use the key to activate your copy of Windows. And then th th that's it. You're done. You're, you're good to go. Oh, and once you're activated, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free if you're into that sort of thing. Can you freaking believe it? No. No, you can't. Hi there, it's me, TechTweeb, your t tech YouTube boy. So, you got this crazy idea in your head that you're going to build your own gaming PC. Well, that's bold of you. What makes you think that you've got what it takes to build a gaming PC? You don't know tech stuff. I bet you don't even know what this is, do you? Well, neither do I. It came from a toaster or something, I think. Building a gaming PC is not as straightforward as buying a gaming PC that's already built, obviously. But where's the fun in that? We don't buy Legos all put together for us. The fun is in making it. Getting the components for your gaming PC isn't just a matter of picking a kit and having everything you need just show up at your door. You're going to have to choose your own stuff. But TechDweeb, you say. That's too hard. I don't know about PC hardware stuff. Can't you just tell me what to buy? Well, no, I can't do that. Why not? Because if I did that, then this video would be outdated in no time. Because new parts come out all the time. Oh, but don't worry. I'm not worried. Y yeah, I know. It's just an expression. Let me finish. Don't worry. Because I'm going to teach you how to choose the parts for your build. So this guide should work for many, many years to come. It's basically the last PC part build guide that you'll ever need if you think about it. Wow, awesome. Yeah, man. This video is going to be the first part of a three video PC building series. So today I'll show you how to choose the parts. The next video will be about how to actually build the PC. And the final video will be about what to do after you build the PC. So get subscribed if you haven't yet so you don't miss those. And if you're watching this in the future, if I've already made the other videos, I'll include the links to those in the description below. The information in this video is very broad. There's lots I'm going to gloss over or not even mention because I want this to be the bare bones info. Just the basics. What's really important without get getting into the weeds. I'm going to try at least. The first thing we're going to do is set an approximate budget. The budget should be based on what you have to spend, but also what you're expecting to get. Are you going to slap this PC on a, a desk with a 1080p monitor and just play some esports titles? Or are you going to do a mid-range setup with maybe a 1440p display and play some more graphically demanding games? Or are you going to go all out and get a 4K monitor and play some super demanding brand new games? I think a, a realistic price point for each of these is $600, $1,200, and $2,400. For the PC that we're building today, we'll go with the low end. This is going to be a $600 budget build, aiming to build a PC that can play modern games at 1080p with maybe medium or high settings. Just a, a really good gaming experience without breaking the bank. The first thing that we're going to do is choose our processor, which techie people like me like to call a CPU. It stands for co Computer Processor something C Central Processing Unit. I do that. Like I said, this guide isn't to tell you which exact CPU to buy because that changes year to year. I I'm going to show you how to find out which CPUs are relevant at the time that you're watching this video. Now, unless things change a lot, there's a good chance that you'll have two main choices for CPU manufacturers, Intel and AMD. They'll both have their ups and downs. I'm not, not going to get into that, but both are a totally fine choice. CPUs come in four kind of tiers of performance. For Intel, it's the i3 at the low end for budget builds, i5 at the mid-range, i7 at the high end, and i9 for people who need a very high-end computer for other stuff than gaming, like video editing or high-end 
3D rendering, or Wordle. And AMD has their own naming. You'll be looking at getting a Ryzen CPU, and those come as Ryzen 3 at the low end, Ryzen 5s at the mid-range, Ryzen 7s at the high end, and Ryzen 9s at the god tier. Since we're looking to build a budget system, we'll be looking at like the 3s and the 5s. That's the i3, the i5, or the Ryzen 3, or the Ryzen 5. By the way, the, the number after the i5 or Ryzen 5 tells you about the generation. So for example, an i3-12100F is a 12th generation i3, and a Ryzen 5 5600X is known as a 5000 series Ryzen. Now here's the thing about processors, all PC parts really. The, the landscape changes all the time. New CPUs come out, old stuff gets cheap, it won't make any sense for me to tell you to buy an i5-13600K for instance, because that information will be outdated by this time next year. So I'm going to show you a method to find out which CPU you should buy no, no matter when you are watching this video. What you need to do is a little bit of research. You're going to pick your tier. Just to keep things simple, I'm going to go with the i5 and the Ryzen 5. And th then you search for the newest CPUs at that tier. So since it's 2023 right now, I'm going to search for best i5 2023 and best Ryzen 5 2023. And you'll find a bunch of articles that tell you what they think the best new CPUs at that tier are. There's probably some debate over which is the best or whatever. It doesn't matter. This is just a starting place. So write down the names of a few of the CPUs that you find that we're going to check out. But that's not all. We're also going to look for last year's CPUs. Last year's stuff is often sold at a discount, often on sale, and often the rest of the components that you need, like the motherboard, will be cheaper too. So we're also going to search for best i5 2022 and best Ryzen 5 2022 and write some of those down. And if you want even more options, you could search for one more year back, best CPUs from 2021 or even another year, 2020. You don't want to go too far back. I think four years is pushing it. But if you're looking for deals, getting some older stock is a great way to save a buck and still get some decent performance today. As long as you're aware that you won't have as many upgrade options in the years to come. Another thing that I should mention is that some CPUs come with a cooler. So if you're fine with using a stock cooler, then that might save you some money. Also, you can compare the performance of CPUs. If you want to do that, head over to this website, CPU Monkey, and put in two CPUs that you're looking at. And then scroll down to the benchmark results to see how they compare. I suggest looking at the Cinebench R23 multi-core comparison. This is how you can compare the value. How much extra performance do you get for the extra money? If you spend some time comparing CPUs, you might find a great CPU at a great price and get some way better performance. Once you have a list of CPUs, it's time to start getting some prices. But here's the thing, CPUs need to go into a motherboard. So when we search for prices, we're gonna search for the prices of the motherboard at the same time because they're kind of a, a pair. Your main goals with picking a MOBO will be making sure that it works with your CPU, making sure that it has the features that you need, like the number of ports and connections, and also the price. As a very rough generalization, your motherboard should cost about half the price of your CPU. For Intel, the tiers of performance are H, B, and Z. A good rule of thumb is to pair low-end i3s with H boards, mid-range i5s with B boards, and high-end i7s and i9s with Z boards. I know there are exceptions to this, I'm just generalizing here to keep things simple. And for AMD, the letters are different, but the principles are the same. We have A at the low end, B for the mid-range, and X for the high end. And to keep it simple, you can pair Ryzen 3s with A boards, Ryzen 5s with B boards, and Ryzen 7s and 9s with X boards. So let's pick a CPU and find a board that works with it. And for that, we need to figure out the CPU socket. All right, so every few generations, the socket, which is the actual hole that the CPU goes in on the motherboard, it changes. They add more connections, they change the size of it. So you've got to make sure that your motherboard both has the right socket and actually supports the CPU that you've chosen. So let's do a little example here. I just found out that the i3-12100F was the best budget CPU of last year. Cool, let's, let's go with that. So I'm going to pull up the official page for that CPU from Intel and find out what the socket is. And there it is, socket LGA1700. And because that's an i3, that means that it'll pair good with an H.264 
skateboard, but may maybe also a b-board if we could find one at a good price. With this information in our brain, we have all that we need to price out a CPU and motherboard combo. You, you can do this anywhere. A Newegg is a good choice, but there are other sites too. I'm just going to go with Amazon here just to keep things simple because everybody knows Amazon. So we'll start by pricing out our CPU, the i3-12100F, and we know what the socket is, so we'll find a motherboard with that socket by searching for LGA-1700 motherboard. You'll get a bunch of different boards at different prices. Look for something to pair with your CPU that's about about half the price of your CPU. If you could squeeze in a B series board with an i3, that's a nice bonus. It might allow for a CPU upgrade down the road, but an H board will probably work fine for you if you need to at the budget end. But hold up, there's one thing here. Um, lots of these boards look pretty different, right? They look like they're different sizes and shapes. Well, that's because they are. There are three size categories of computers. ITX, which are the teeny tiny little guys, MATX, which are the medium sized guys, and ATX, which are the big boys. The main difference between them, other than the size, is the number of PCIe slots. Very often, MATX is the sweet spot because you get a little bit of extra connectivity without going too big. MATX is my favorite size to build. Once you have a CPU and motherboard picked out, the final step is that you want to make sure that your motherboard supports your CPU. So let's say for instance that I'm going to pair this 12100F with this H610M that I found. I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search for this specific motherboards and include the words CPU support. We want to find the official site for this board with all the CPUs that it supports listed. And here we are and there we go. It is listed. So we're sure that this CPU is supported by this motherboard. Ultimately, for this build, I went with a Ryzen 5 3600 processor and a B450M motherboard. I chose this combo because the CPU was really cheap and the board was cheap and the relative performance difference compared to something more expensive was pretty small, so this is what I fit within my budget the best. The next thing that we need to do is pick a graphics card or a GPU. Generally speaking, the GPU will be the most expensive part of your build. It usually comes out from a, a third to half half of the price of the entire build. There are three companies that make GPUs, Intel, AMD, and Nvidia. All are fine choices, but I'll go over the pros and cons of each one quickly. Nvidia GPUs are more expensive on average, uh, but they do have great encoding for recording and streaming. They have more extra advanced features like better ray tracing and advanced driver features, and their boxes are green. AMD has always traditionally kind of been the underdog, but now they're basically the, the top tier in terms of price to performance. So they're always a good choice. They have good driver software, but it doesn't have as many extra features and they, they lag behind Nvidia with things like ray tracing, but they're still great GPUs and their boxes are red. Intel is the, the middle ground in terms of price to performance. They're, they're kind of new to the GPU market. You will have driver issues and compatibility issues with Intel GPUs at this point, which means you're gonna get relatively poor performance on older games. However, Intel GPUs have the best encoding of the bunch, AV1 encoding support. So if you do streaming or game capture, this is an amazing choice. And their boxes are blue. If this is your first build, or if you just want something hassle-free, I'd suggest avoiding Intel because they're a little bit finicky at this point. Hopefully that changes in the future though. As for AMD versus Nvidia, well, the main thing that you need to do is decide how important those extra features are for you, like ray tracing or DLSS. But honestly, if you don't care about ray tracing, and you, you probably shouldn't, especially at the low end, it, just go with whatever's cheaper. Just like CPUs, we want to know what the current generation of GPUs are. So we'll search for the best GPUs 2023 and see what we find. It looks like now AMD has released the 7000 series of GPUs and Nvidia has released the 4000 series of their GPUs. But you can feel comfortable going back a generation or two when you're looking. I can do an entire video on picking a GPU, but the easiest way is just to go to Newegg or Amazon and search for GPUs. See what's out there at the, the price you want to spend. So when I look, I find a few GPUs that are around what I want to spend, but which one of those is the best bang for the buck? 
Well, I don't know, but we could compare them against each other the same way that we did with the CPUs, with the website GPU Monkey. So pick two GPUs that you want to compare and put their names in and then take a look at the FPS differences. Find which one gives the best performance compared to the price. You can also check some YouTube videos of the game that you want to play and the name of the GPU that you're looking at if you want to see how it's going to run if you had that GPU. Ultimately, for this build, I decided on the RTX 3050. The RX 6600 was better overall, but the 3050 did better in a few games that I actually wanted to play at around the same price, and I'm willing to pay extra for the RTX features here. But like I said, you'll need to see what's available at the price that you want to pay, whatever you're watching this video because this stuff changes every day. Uh, believe it or not, that's the hardest part done. The next sections will go pretty quick. Uh, for the RAM, you need to check what type of RAM your motherboard supports. It'll be DDR4 or DDR5 probably. This B450 motherboard that I bought is a DDR4 board, so that's what I want. You're looking for a kit. You need two sticks of RAM. Don't build a PC with only one stick of RAM. That's a novice mistake because it'll be running in single channel mode and you'll be missing out on some performance compared to dual channel mode. And another consideration is the speed. You want to get RAM that is faster, but don't go all out here because the really fast stuff is quite a bit more expensive and it won't give you that much more gaming performance, barely any really. The kit that I chose is this cheap T-Force DDR4 kit of 3200 MHz RAM. And now on to the case. If your motherboard is ATX size, you'll need an ATX case. If it's MATX, you'll need a micro ATX case. And if it's ITX, you'll need a mini ITX case. Some cases come with fans and some don't. Some cases have glass side panels, some have plastic, some have solid sides, some have RGB, some don't. There's not one answer for this. Just look around at what's available at your price range and buy what you like the look of. Just make sure that it's the same size as your motherboard. ATX, MATX, or ITX. This one that I'm using is called the Thermaltake S100 MATX Mini Tower. Uh, next up, we have the storage. There are kind of two main categories of storage. There are solid state drives or SSDs, which are for your system drive and maybe your storage if you're rich. And there are hard drives, which are big. They have lots of storage, but they're slow. So they're good for game storage, but don't use them as a system drive. Use an SSD for that. There are two main types of SSD. There are NVMe SSDs, which are small, about the size and shape of a piece of juicy fruit gum. Juicy fruit is gonna move ya. And they can plug into the M.2 slot of the motherboard. And there are SATA SSDs. They're the size of like laptop hard drives and they plug in with cables. NVMe SSDs are more expensive, but they're very fast. The fastest type of storage. SATA SSDs aren't as fast, but they're still pretty fast. I don't have any problem using one of those if the price is right. I recommend getting at least 256 gigabytes for your system drive. And, and that's only if you add an extra hard drive for game storage. Otherwise, get at least 512 gigabytes for your system slash storage drive. For my budget build, I went with this cheap 512 gigabyte NVMe drive that is going to be my system drive and my games drive. And then maybe down the road, we could upgrade this PC with a cheap two terabyte hard drive for extra storage. Power supplies are pretty easy. You just need a power supply that is powerful enough to power all your components. The main component that you need to worry about is the GPU. Most GPUs will have a suggested power supply wattage. So you can either Google the name of your GPU and the words power supply requirements to see what info that you can find. But I like this tool, whatpsu.com. There you can put in your CPU and your GPU and it'll tell you how many watts your power supply needs to be. I recommend adding 100 watts to what the tool says. It says I need a 450 watt power supply for this Ryzen 5 3600 and RTX 3050. So I'm going to go with a 550 watt as a power supply, this one right here. As for a cooler, this is kind of optional because there's a, a good chance that your CPU came with a cooler. And if it did, you can and probably should just use the cooler that came with your CPU if you're on a budget. Otherwise, you could buy a cooler. You'll need to know how many watts your CPU is rated for, which is called the TDP. You can find this on the specs page for your CPU. This Ryzen 5 3600 is rated for 65 watts, so I need a cooler rated for at least that. 
And you need to make sure that the, the cooler will actually fit the socket of your motherboard. So in my case, the socket is called AM4. So if I didn't want to go with my stock cooler, I go to Amazon and search for AM4 cooler and find a cooler that I liked and made sure it was rated for at least 65 watts. On the budget end, I'm a fan of these Thermalright Tower Coolers. I'm very happy with these products. I'll, I'll include some links to these in the description below if you need a cooler. And if your case didn't come with fans, then you'll need some fans. Depending on the size of your case, you may need a few. The, the bare minimum is one rear exhaust fan. But if your case supports it, I recommend having at least three fans two intake at the front and one exhaust in the back. We're talking about 120 millimeter fans here, by the way. It's hard to tell you exactly what you should buy, but it's also hard to screw this up. Just make sure that you have some fans for airflow. Fans can be pretty fancy, so get some white ones or some glowy RGB ones or whatever to make your PC look cool if you want. Speaking of RGB, uh, I'm not going to cover how to make sure that all your RGB components work together. It's a bit messy and there's a few different methods of RGB connections and I don't want to go into the weeds in this video. I could make an entire video on RGB stuff, so let me know in the comments if you'd find that helpful and maybe I'll make one if there's enough interest. But I'll, I'll link to a good article that explains the basics in the description below. So check that out if you, if you need to know more about that stuff. So go ahead and order that stuff and it'll show up at your house and then you'll have a pile of stuff. So, and then, so in the next video of the series, we'll build the PC using the components that we picked. If you have any questions about what I've said here, leave your questions in the description below. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button if you like the video, or don't if you didn't. That'll do it for me. I'm TechDweeb. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.